Paitamanga is the recognition of the relationship between both coasts of the North Pacific. That ocean is not a wall, it's a bridge. There are stories in my family of connection between Haida and Japan, and perhaps even Korea. And that Japan in particular was a place of refuge for indigenous people from this part of the world when life in relationship to America and Canada or to Britain was problematic and uncomfortable and, and violent. I want to honor that because it's not a commonly known history. So I wanted to create this graphic interpretation of old narratives and not just old narratives, but maybe get down to some of the messages embedded in these narratives and parables. And I want to extract them and compare them to the stories we need to hear in the living moment. Carpe Fin is an artwork that is commissioned by the Seattle Art Museum and it is in conversation with a work by my chinny, Albert Edward Eden Shaw. So the story in Albert's front lit and the story in the mural is essentially the same. And it talks about the relationship between human and ocean. The story in Carpe Fin starts off with the same premise, which is someone has developed a capacity to be a very efficient predator and goes out to the ocean and harvests sea lions. In the original story, the man who builds the first spear this multi-barbed spear that has got a detachable uh, spearhead so you can thrust down and you can get the sea line, you can pull the shaft back out, you can put another barb on, and, and so you're, you're very efficient. He is abandoned by community because he's too efficient. It's destroying so much. It's too efficient. It's too inefficient. That's what the story's about. What happens when you go too far, too fast? You, you, you become invisible, you disappear. And so I moved the story into the contemporary moment. You know, the scene is contemporary. It's got outboard motors. But the premise is, if we are not mindful of the relationship we have with the ocean, we will disappear. We will become invisible. And so we need to be very conscious of how we take from the ocean. And we need to recognize that it has a right onto itself to exist. That's the story that Albert talks about. Why does Albert carve that front piece? Because he lived in a similar time. He lived in a time where this collision between Western colonialism and indigeneity was, had profound impacts. Population losses of, you know, perhaps 80 to 90 percent. Aggression and violence. He saw that. He lived it. And he had to figure out, how am I going to navigate through this time, which is the end of something? That's why Chinny Albert's work and my work today is connected, because we're both at the end. It's not about it's all over. It's not become active and seize this moment, which could be the end, and make it better. And hopefully, my great-great-grandchildren in time will go back and reflect in this moment, say, we're still here. We figured it out. So, seize the end, Carpe Fin. The materiality of Carpe Fin speaks to that Haida manga genre. The paper is Kozawashi, which is mulberry paper. It's made on the west coast of Japan, on Honshu. And I selected this paper because it is so amazingly robust. I just love working with the brush. I like the way that the brush runs itself. It has an inclination to be responsive to the surface. And you press down the bristles, expand against the paper, and the, the line gets wide and fat and luscious. And then when you pull back into tension, the line contracts and becomes thin. And it's just like the frame line in classic Haida design where the lines are compressing and expanding all the time. 
Sometimes we're bold and we step up and we speak out. And other times we retract and let others be bold and speak out. It's this dance and the brush does the same thing. I didn't want to put text into Carpe Fin. I don't want to be the only voice in the work. I do not want to be the instructor telling the observer how to see the piece. Because if I do that, the observer doesn't get to learn the story themselves and discover those neural pathways. Because I've prescribed a course of action and I've said, this is the way you must see the world. So the real magic of Carpe Fin is not entirely in the object itself, but it's in the space between the object and the observer. It's that space that's filled with potential, an undiluted potential, where the observer gets to look at the object and imagine and create and walk away with what they see at the moment and what they need at the moment. So I want people to have an emotional point of access to the work and through that to have an emotional point of access and connection to their vision of indigeneity, to their vision of the other. I want them to feel that they have a point of understanding, that they can see common humanity, common questions, and that it is not this strange, fantastical other which might be dangerous. Art is not a noun, it's a verb. It's the magic that is created between the object and the observer. That's where the art is. And this is so much about that relationship based on my experience growing up in a Haida community, of Haida lineage, but also of Northern European stock. And that's who we are as a species. We're all hybrid. We're all complex and diverse. So it is Haida art in the same way that when Albert carved that piece, the world he lived in was complex and diverse and changing, and so is this.